Hello Solar Eclipse Timer users, this is Dr. Telepin checking back in. Getting a video of the colored 360 degree horizon is great, but if you're going to do it, make it smooth and automate it. I am going to teach you how. Second contact in 60 seconds. I want to explain in a little more depth how I set up the spinning 360 degree horizon video. This is a great thing to do at an eclipse and with the modern technology we have now you can do it much better than just doing a shaky handheld video as you spin around videoing the horizon. Let me start by discussing the history of two things I did at past eclipses. When preparing for my first eclipse in 2001, I was well aware that the horizon would be beautiful. So for that eclipse, I set up a tripod with an SLR film camera and a wide angle lens and had it pointed towards the direction where totality would occur. That camera had a multifunction back which could control taking a sequence of bracketed pictures. I was limited to 36 images in a roll of film and that eclipse had a totality duration of 3 minutes and 32 seconds. So I had to split up those 36 images between bracketing and lasting from the beginning to the end of totality. I captured great still images. I was really excited about them. They showed the progression of the shadow across the horizon and the changing horizon brightness. I especially love the image that has the silhouette of a guy looking up at totality with binoculars. A silhouette of a person doing that is a classic look. These still images got me inspired to try a rotating video of the horizon in 2002. The first challenge was finding a portable device that would slowly rotate the camera. I really struggled trying to find something. I finally found a battery powered rotisserie turner which had a relatively slow spin rate of one revolution in about 20 seconds. I modified the bottom to make an attachment point for a tripod and made a custom post with a quarter twenty thread to attach a camera. The second challenge was deciding on a camera to spin. I did not want to buy and pack a second large Hi8 video camera. I already had one on my guiding mount. When you are traveling internationally to eclipses, you have to limit the weight of your gear. So I decided to use an additional Coolpix 990 camera I was bringing on that trip anyway. This is the exact setup I used in 2002 in Africa. I had that camera with a wide angle lens on the spinner with a coiled up wire that was attached to an intervalometer type device which was programmed to be the trigger to start the recording. This device was programmed by a serial connection to the old terminal program on Windows 98. This camera only allowed a 40 second movie at 320 by 240 pixels and did not record sound. You can hear me briefly explain the function to someone right before second contact in this video clip from 2002. Right. What are you shooting for? It's going to take a 40 second digital movie. This eclipse had a totality duration of 1 minute and 22 seconds, so there was no time to fool around. I started the spinner and turned on the camera way ahead of C2. The intervalometer device was pre-programmed to start the recording with a slight delay after totality began. The eclipse occurs and it was beautiful. This was an exciting eclipse because it was so short and it was this eclipse that I first saw shadow bands. Well, this setup becomes one of my Eclipse Day Gremlins stories. Later that day, I went to the camera to review the video and there was nothing there. Nothing got recorded. So the intervalometer did not start the record process during totality as planned. So I don't know what happened, but I missed it. In 2006, I did an approaching darkness video, not a horizon video, because I observed that eclipse on a cruise ship. So for 2017, I was determined to do a better job. And of course, things were so much better due to the advancements in gear. 
So first of all, we have miniature high-definition cameras with wide-angle lenses, and we can begin the recording process remotely and visualize the framing of the shot. But what is really exciting is the spinning device. Look at this baby right here. This is called a Turns Pro. This is a battery-powered, microprocessor-controlled camera spinner that is programmable. It's amazing. The spinning post is a quarter-twenty thread for your camera. It even comes with a clip to hold the smartphone so you can spin that. This makes it very easy to capture a smooth 360-degree horizon video during totality with a video camera or a mobile device. I will do a full review of this device in another episode. So, for fun, let's compare something. Let's play a clip of my crazy 2002 contraption spinning, immediately followed by the new way of spinning a camera. Here's the old crazy way. Now, here's the new way on a Turns Pro. Wow, that is a big difference. A couple of things to consider when you are rotating a high-definition camera is the rotation rate and the field of view. You do not want to rotate too quickly because you can create motion blur across the pixels. The lens field of view and the frame rate have an impact on motion blur. In general, when panning or rotating with high-definition cameras, you want to try to move as slowly as possible. For the last eclipse, I tested various rotation rates with a Sony action cam with a sensor size of 1920 by 1080 and a frame rate of 30 frames per second. Here's a basic starting point for rotation rate for your Eclipse Observing Sight video. If you are using a camera with a lens with a 30 millimeter equivalent field of view and a frame rate of 30 frames per second, the video quality for the Eclipse site should be acceptable with a rotation rate of about one full rotation over 60 seconds. If you are working with a wider field of view and 60 frames per second, you could rotate a little faster. Again, with high definition video, the slower you rotate, the better the video quality will be. But here's the issue. You have to balance the rotation rate with the totality duration to see how many full revolutions you can fit in. You don't plan for a single revolution over the duration of totality because remember the horizons will change the colors and the lighting are not static during totality so you want at least a couple of complete rotations also you are going to automate this you're going to turn all this stuff on about three minutes before totality so you do not have control over which direction the camera will be facing when totality begins one other thing about field of view, for this last eclipse, the sun was an altitude of 62 degrees. So even with the wide field of view of this camera, it was not able to include the eclipse happening. It was too high over the horizon. So for my observing position at Sally Notch Vineyard in Madisonville, Tennessee, with a totality duration of 2 minutes and 38 seconds, I programmed a rotation rate of one full revolution in 50 seconds. So 158 second totality divided by 50 seconds would allow me to fit three full revolutions, and my previous testing showed good quality video at that rotation rate. Now, you should always go to an eclipse with a compass and a torpedo level. Here's where you will use the level. Before the eclipse, when setting up the tripod, it is important to level the turns pro on your tripod. You want to have a level pan of the horizon.
You can program the settings in the Turns Pro way before C2 and leave it in standby mode. When my Solar Eclipse Timer app makes an announcement three minutes before C2, it is time to turn on your Horizon video camera and activate the Turns Pro. This is also the time to turn on your Shadow Bands video camera. So that's how you do it. Here is my horizon video from the last eclipse. Look at the 360 degree colored horizon as the camera rotates and how it changes throughout the eclipse. Look at the crowd enjoying the eclipse. I love the excitement of a crowd at a total eclipse. Thank you for watching this Solar Eclipse Timer episode. I think you will agree that this is a great way to document the eclipse. If you think information like this helps your understanding of eclipse preparation, please subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the little bell that pops up and you will be notified when I release new episodes. If you don't want to subscribe now, that's okay too. Just please monitor this channel for new episodes and visit my website. Witnessing a total solar eclipse is a wonderful thing. Try to get to the next one. Thanks again. I appreciate your time.